Abbas and his compatriot Ponle, aka Mr. Woodbury, were fully in the grip of a different invisible enemy. The FBI's high-tech organized crime squad have been analyzing Alumari's devices since his arrest and covering the easily decipherable links to Hashpapi's phones and accounts. They had also pegged Ponle as the orchestrator behind millions of dollars in bank accounts and Bitcoin wallets used in BEC scams. For months, the FBI had been coordinating with the UAE authorities to surveil both men and their suspected associates. Sometime between midnight and 1 a.m. on Monday, June 8th, Park was up watching the news in a bus apartment while a bus slept upstairs. Suddenly, the front door burst open and the apartment was flooded with black clad men brandishing weapons. Park's first thought was armed robbers, but it was a Dubai police SWAT team fully kitted up and looking for Hush Puppy. They ordered Park onto the floor along with another Nigerian friend who'd come to Dubai on vacation and moved in with a bus when flights home were cancelled. The police took their phones and demanded to know where a bus was, where his laptops were and where his money was. The agents found him upstairs wearing a white designer t-shirt and his signature chin strap beard looking dazed. Later, Dubai police will announce that they had captured in one of six simultaneous raids that led to the arrest of 12 suspects including Ponle, Park, and a Nigerian photographer named Kelvin Ogidika, who often hung out with them. They claimed to have confiscated for seven phones, 21 laptops, $7 million worth of cars, and $40 million. According to Park, the suspects were taken to police headquarters and jailed separately. For four days, a Dubai prosecutor cautioned them first, followed by FBI agents who asked about Abbas and the source of his money. When the FBI came, Park told them the same thing. Abbas had only told him that he was a real estate investor and that he changed money for African bigwigs who came to Dubai to shop. He'd never even seen Abbas use a laptop in the apartment. Abbas and Ponle, seemingly the only captives of interest to the FBI, were quickly put on a plane to the US. The other 10 arrested men, whose names dribbled out in the Nigerian press, and which we were able to confirm in a presentation given by the Dubai police chief, disappeared into the opaque UAE justice system without charges or lawyers. Park says they were not even taken to court. The Dubai police were so pleased with the raid that they quickly released a video of the affair styled as an action film trailer titled Operation Fox Hunt 2 with versions narrated in Arabic and English. Operation Fox Hunt 1 had been an unrelated roundup of fraud suspects in the previous February. Dubai police have once again solved yet another case involving an international online scammer known as Raymond Abbas, but who goes by Hush Puppy on social media platforms. In less than just four months, Dubai's police force was able to solve the new operation, dubbed Fox Hunt 2, where 12 other gang members were also arrested. Six raids were carried out simultaneously while the suspects were sleeping in their Dubai residences. After months of investigating and hours of monitoring the gang's social media accounts, a team of highly trained Dubai police officers were able to confirm the gang's whereabouts and fraudulent activities. Abbas and Ponle were flown to Chicago, where Ponle remains facing trial. Abbas, after a preliminary hearing, was transferred to Los Angeles to face multiple charges of money laundering and wire fraud. The Dubai police also claimed that Abbas or his co-conspirators 
committed fraud involving COVID ventilators and personal protective equipment but haven't presented any evidence in public. In the initial hearings, a bus lawyer asserted that he had earned his living legitimately through his influencing. In January, a bus and the attorney parted ways, citing irreconcilable disagreements regarding the theory of defense. And a bus replaced him with an LA based attorney who declined to comment on the case. Abbas himself didn't respond to a letter sent to him in jail. A spokesperson for the Office of the U.S. Attorney for the Central District of California declined to comment, setting the pending case, and the FBI did respond to repeated requests for comments. In one omina signed for Abbas, last fall, Alomari elected to plead guilty to money laundering charges, saying he conspired with Abbas in the law firm BEC scam, the Malta Bank heist, and the Premier League scam. He also pleaded guilty to separate BC charges in the state of Georgia. Alumari's attorney declined to comment. In a way, a bus case only serves to highlight how rarely BC crimes are investigated and prosecuted. There are two issues from a law enforcement perspective. One is just the volume of it. There aren't nearly enough FBI agents, Secret Service agents, come close to being able to investigate all of this. The other issue is that major actors such as Abbas are typically overseas, requiring complex international operations to extract them. We think probably what rose Hashpapi up to the list was the amount of money he was clearly making. And not only the amount of money he was making, but he was also flaunting it out there on places like Instagram. No matter how many millions Abbas alleged cut amounted to, he's arguably still a patsy for the likes of the alleged North Korean hackers who US authority say took home the bulk of the loot and remained safe in their home country. The agents who filed the criminal complaint against Abbas appeared to delight in noting his online extravagances, posting to describe in detail the photos and captions, hashtags included, that they had used to verify his identity. Perhaps most cutting, they adduced Abbas's own birthday posts, matching them to his Nigerian passport and one he'd recently obtained from St. Kitts and Nevis. An agent wrote that he had seen a post on October 11, 2017 of a birthday cake with the inscription, Happy Birthday Ramon, and the caption, Thanks so much Gucci for this special. God bless you guys at the Dubai Mall Gucci store. The companies that benefited from Hashpapi's largesse over the years and often repaid him with merchandise and trips, haven't exactly rushed to his defense since his indictment was unsealed. No public relations representative from Gucci, Fendi, or Louis Vuitton responded to requests for comment for this story. The same brands had welcomed him at high gloss events and exclusive fashion shows. He had a lot of followers, none of the PR team invited him, was all that a representative of Rich List Group an events organization in Dubai that had hosted a bus at a Formula One race would say. Park told us that at least some of what a bus showed off on social media was loaned to him solely for his Instagram. How much of his Gucci lifestyle was on loan from various brands may end up a tangential subject in the trial. It does really raise an important set of questions about the ethics of marketing and how that intersects with the rights of influencers, says Mehita Ikani a professor at the University of Witwatersrand in South Africa who studied digital marketing in the Global South. What responsibility do they have to do due diligence when they are choosing or recruiting an influencer? After the pageantry of the Operation Fox Hunt 2 video, the Dubai police also refused to comment on the case and said nothing about the fate of the 10 other suspects swept up in the raid. Park says that they were shuffled from prison to prison for five months, deprived of the chance to bathe for weeks on end, and subjected to other abuses he wouldn't discuss. In November, they were abruptly transferred to immigration custody and told they needed to find the funds for their own plane tickets home, without the clothes, phones, or cash confiscated from them. Park says that they were told they were at the wrong place at the wrong time. Ugidika, the photographer, reappeared on social media after his release. According to reports, he's planning to release his own documentary about the incident. Hi guys, this is the OK Effect and everything is OK as you already know. There's been 
one year since I was arrested in Dubai, I want to thank God for my friends, my family. It was a very traumatic experience. I appreciate the love. Shout out to everyone that came through for me. It was crazy. <laughs> Meanwhile, Park has been struggling to regain his footing back in Nigeria. According to him, he hardly eats now nor goes out. At times, he doesn't have money to fill his car. With no official recognition of his innocence, he's found his bank accounts blocked. But through it all, he remains loyal to his friend. Ramon is like my brother. When I lost my job, at times he sent money to me. At times when I had any problem, I called him and he solved these problems for me. Within Nigeria, mass public protests against the special anti-robbery squad broke out in cities across the country in October after a video surfaced showing what the video's original poster described as an extrajudicial killing. The protests quickly expanded to encompass wider issues of corruption and inequality. However, the University of Ibadan's Ankle says the uprising were partly driven by a whole generation who found themselves treated like fraudsters. Ankle says, that it was so bad that if you had an iPhone, they thought that you are a Yahoo guy. The profiling over there has made it very difficult for the youth to breathe. After 10 days of mass protests in the streets, the government pledged to disband the SARS unit. Days later, the police opened fire on protesters, killing 12 people. We wondered how Ashbabi will have weighed in on the protests. Anyone arriving on his feet these days, with the knowledge of his case, his opulence takes on a different cast. With his last post more than a year old, the top commenters are all from dozens, sometimes hundreds of gawkers who have come to mock his hubris. Nigeria is home to a vibrant tech scene, particularly in financial technologies, and stories such as Abbas are a source of exasperation strengthening the current of negative perceptions that legitimate tech workers already swim against. But Hashpapi was also a celebrity after all. Dig down further and you can find the fans, the inspired, the people who genuinely seemed to get something from the gospel Hashpapi preached and the hustle he purported to represent. He retains plenty of vocal supporters in Nigeria, those who think he's innocent and those who won't judge him if he's guilty. New influencers have stepped up the claim for a mantle of Gucci master, including Abbas frenemy Bonfa, who's returned to Dubai since his release by the Nigerian EFCC, but none quite matches Abbas verve and drip. The gossip blogs continue to track every minor development in Hashpapi's case. For now, we're left with the wisdom of Hashpapi's final post on June 7, 2020, two days before his arrest. May success and prosperity not be a once upon time story in your life. He wrote, alongside a photo that uncharacteristically, prophetically, even featured a sparkling white luxury SUV with Hashpapi himself out of the frame. Thank you, Lord, for the many blessings in my life. Continue to shame those waiting for me to be shamed. <laughs> <laughs>